A very, very warm welcome to you all. Please, as always, take a place on the uh, sofa and make yourselves uh, very, very uncomfortable. There's some blinnies over there. I'm sorry, but they're leftovers from last week. And uh, there's some uh, Ardennes pâté and there's some foie gras. I think it's pronounced foie gras. I'm not sure my French is not what it used to be. Whose is? Uh, or is it foie gras? Uh, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, but as I say, make yourselves uncomfortable. There's a, a bottle of dandelion and burdock over there. And there's a bottle of cheap claret, uh, which should uh, oil the palm of your hands. Which Gurdjieff was always saying, we must uh, oil the palm of our hands to actually make progress of any kind. So we are well oiled, we are well watered, wined and uh, fed. So let me begin. This is a this is basically two stories from uh, uh, Gurdjieff's uh, life and his teachings, and they're quite uh, astounding stories to say the least. And the first one involves Gurdjieff himself, and he had an apartment on the Rue de Rue or Rue or Rue de Colognes in uh, Paris in the nineteen thirties and forties, and people would come and see him, who wanted them to help him. And a lady appeared one day, she was possibly in her early 50s, and it was just Gurdjieff and the lady in the apartment. And she said, I've spent all of my life striving for things, and I've become materially comfortable and successful. And I've had a number of relationships, and I'm not happy. And I, I never have been. There's always been a gnawing angst and a disquiet, uh, which has led to my health being compromised. And I want it to be resolved. I want to find out what is the cause of this. And Gurdjieff looked at her and he said, not for one moment, madam, in your life, do you know your real I? Not for one moment. All your problems and difficulties stem from not knowing your real I, who you really are. And Gurdjieff had a cup of a glass of water at a nearby table, which he took into his hand. And he held the glass of water in his hands for a couple of minutes. And then he passed it over to the, to the, the woman who was with him. And she held it. And by her own account, she said from that moment forth, her life was completely and utterly transformed beyond recognition. And she began the work, the fourth way work with Gurdjieff. And she lived to be in her early 80s. And she said it was the most incredible, the most beautiful moment of my life being in the apartment with Gurdjieff that day when he gave me the glass of water and he said, not for one moment you have known your real I. And then I began to work and I experienced a, an otherness and a joy beyond all human compare, which lifted me into completely different territories. That's just, that's just one of many examples of the miraculous nature and the truth of the fourth way work and the story for those of you who want to want to read it is related in a glorious book called Monsieur Gurdjieff by a French writer from the 1950s called Louis Pavels. I'll put a link in the description box it's, it's, it's almost impossible to find uh, it's not available online uh, and I've looked for it I don't have a copy in my apartment and I've looked for it, and it's almost impossible to, as I say, to find. But I found it in a, a library here in London about 20 years ago and read it avidly for about three or four months every day. Uh, and it's glorious. Louis Pavels, P-A-U-W-E-L-S, Monsieur Gurdjieff. 
and the stories in there in there are incredible and there's first-hand accounts of uh, Catherine Mansfield, the short story writer, uh, of her stay at the Priory in Fontainebleau with Gurdjieff and many other people. It's very, very beautiful. And the second story involves a certain Maurice Nicole, uh, who was a very, very preeminent neurosurgeon in London in the 1930s with a practice in Harley Street uh, which is a private uh, medical practice uh, in central London, just off uh, Oxford Circus. And Nicole went to a meeting that Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff gave in London one evening, and his life was revolutionised. And a few days later, he sold, this is, this is Maurice Nicole, he sold his practice in Harley Street and went to the Priory to work with Gurdjieff. And the rest is history. He wrote five stupendous commentaries entitled The Psychological, Psychological Commentaries on the Teachings of Gurdjieff and Uspensky, which are breathtaking in their sublimity, can't be recommended enough. Uh, and he was also a very, very close friend of, of Uspensky's. This is Maurice Nicole, and they did a lot of work together. And then Lord John Pentland came into the scene and worked both with Nicole and Uspensky before going to America and, and forming the Gurdjieff uh, Foundation. And this is Pentland. And before I tell you the Maurice Nicole story, one of the most effective, positive, uplifting quotes from all of the Fourth Way work is from Lord John Pentland. And I only came across it about six months ago and I try to implement it every single day. And the quote is as follows. In any particular moment, we have a choice. We have a choice between being taken by our mechanical reaction or by being called to a higher presence, which is truly corresponding to the situation we are in. That is, that is truly sublime. It's extraordinarily difficult to do because the mechanical impression comes in like greased lightning and, and it hits the emotional centre immediately. And in most instances, we will react. But the point is not to react. The point is to be called to a higher presence, which is truly corresponding to the situation we are in and I've done that over the last few years the few last few days sorry uh, and the results have been utterly glorious and I wanted to say how I felt about a certain person who's I believe treated me in a manner which I don't believe is uh, conducive to a relationship in which the both parties wish to, to develop uh, and I wanted to say what I felt. And there were eyes within me which came out. And they wanted to be heard. And I was going to text this person and tell them. And I fought with it for about four hours. Like Jacob wrestling with the angel in Genesis 28, final section. I will not let you go unless you bless me, said Jacob to the angel. And he didn't let him go and he was blessed greatly. This is Jacob. And fighting with these very, very lowly eyes who wish to express themselves is a tremendous battle. And I fought. And I didn't do what they wished me to do. And I didn't contact the person. And the feeling was glorious to not have given in to the mechanical response. And the person will now be left to their own devices and the effects of influence C. Uh, because we are, what we are doing here is of such an incredibly high nature, uh, we can't waste our time on people who are enmeshed with influence A, which are the influence of, influences of the world, material success, promotion, money, sex, etc., relationships, etc., etc. We are firmly in the region of influence B, of esoteric influences 
which lead directly to influence C. And if I contact anyone who is deep within influence A, I will go so far with that person and then I will stop and I will leave them to it. Because the, the time, as you Spensky says, time is counted and we can't, we can't waste the time that we have. It's the very, very last thing we can do. So this person will be left to their own devices now to find out for themselves and respond to me accordingly in a manner which is fitting to one who is developing esoterically. I will do no more. And that is because, as I've just said, I applied the, the Lord John Pentland quote. At any particular moment, we can react mechanically and be taken by the incoming impression, or we can be called to a higher presence, which, it, which corresponds to the situation we are in. And I would suggest anyone who is seriously involved in the fourth way work that you tattoo that upon your soul. Uh, it's only one line, but the effects are absolutely awesome. It changes the whole dynamic completely, and it fits in with what Uspensky says, says in the fourth way. Uh, it is only when we actually stop doing that we actually begin to do. Doing begins by not doing. This is non-mechanical reaction to the incoming <coughs> emotional, emotional impression. And the, the story of, of Maurice Nicol, the second one, he went to an art gallery here in London with a friend, and the friend stood almost in front of the painting and blathered on incessantly for about 10 minutes. And afterwards he said to Maurice Nicol, uh, what do you think of, you, of the painting? What are your impressions of this painting? And there was a slight pause, and Maurice Nicot looked at him, and he said, if you would please stop talking interminably and stand aside, I will be able to see the painting, <laughs> and I will give you my interpretation. That is glorious. It's basically uh, an allegory, a metaphor, for something of a much higher nature which can be applied in every single instance in one's life. If we ourselves and people around us get out of the way and stop blathering, talking incessantly, we can see things we wouldn't see otherwise, and then we can truly express ourselves. We get out of our own way and get other people who are in the way also out of the way. If you would stand aside and be quiet, I will tell you what I think. And the man was mortified. Obviously his corns had been trod on very harshly. And he thought, what on earth is happening? This man is insulting me. But he wasn't insulting him. He was telling him as it is. And there's a few people in my life who are like the man in front of the painting, who were blathering on and not really receiving what is uh, being put forth. And as I say, I can do no more. And if one says anything to them and treads on their corns, <laughs> the hull of the ensuing hullabaloo uh, is beyond description. You've hurt me, you've upset me, you've offended me. And Gurdjieff was doing it all the time. And it's, it's done for one particular reason, to sort, to sort the wheat from the chaff. And those who have been called to this work and who are genuine, and have been called by influence C, will come through. Uh, probably more so if you tread on their corns very harshly, they will come through. But all the shilly-shallying, dilly-dallying along the way uh, is going to get one nowhere. You're just going to spin on your heels. And I want to get somewhere with this work. And I've met a very, very beautiful man over the last couple of weeks. And we are in constant contact with one another and the level of synchronicity and the work that is being done is truly supernatural. Uh, and I know you will watch this and I want to thank you for what you've shared with me and the amount of effort that you've put in and the otherness that you've brought into my life. 
this is a real genuine essence connection gentleman who came through a couple of weeks ago one day I will have a shave I don't know when but I'm sitting here writing poetry and plays uh, and corresponding with people and it's the last thing on my mind to go in the bathroom and shave this, this badger's ass off my face. It'll be down here soon. I will be like uh, Rasputin, the mystical monk. Uh, who knows? Who knows anything? I know nothing at all. In uh, King Lear by Shakespeare, uh, King Lear in Act 1 says to his daughter Cordelia, What dost thou know, dear Cordelia? And Cordelia thinks for a few seconds, and she says, I know nothing, dear father. And King Lear responds by saying, Thou hast answered correctly, Cordelia. King Lear, Act 1, Cordelia and King Lear. The great ascended master, William Shakespeare, who was possibly the uh, Saint Germain of the Violet Flame. Very, very probable. Another ascended master. I need to go to the bathroom now and, and see a man about a dog. Uh, possibly only the English people watching this will actually know what that actually means. See a man about a dog. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And even if there's only 50 people watching, even if there's only 5 people watching, and they connect to it and they respond, it's very, very beautiful. It's not about numbers. It's about quality. And that's what counts. Quality and consistency please finish the uh the blinnies and the foie gras foyus grass whatever and the dandelion and burdock it'll make you burp but burping's fine You've got to get it out one way or another thank you very much lots of love bye